This is the first in a series of videos on the XV6 operating system kernel. This is a very short but very sweet Unix-like operating system that's used for educational purposes. It was developed at MIT and used at other places as well. This is an operating system that's used by students primarily in an operating system course and uh, there are two implementations of this kernel one for the x86 architecture and one for the RISC-V architecture. In this series of videos I'm going to be talking about the RISC-V version. The RISC-V version that is used is a 64-bit processor and whether you're using the x86 version or the RISC-V version uh, you're probably going to be using it in an emulated fashion using an emulator like Kimu. Uh, most likely you don't have a spare computer sitting around, probably a spare uh, RISC-V uh, processor is even less likely. Um, so instead you'll be running the operating system, if you choose to run it, uh, under an emulator. But in any case, it's meant to run on a bare machine. And in fact, it's a multi-core operating system, so uh, Kimu is capable of emulating multi-core systems. As I said, it's short and very sweet. Um, it's only about 6,000 lines of code. Most of it is written in the C programming language with maybe about 300 lines in assembly language. In this uh, video series, what I'm going to do is do a walkthrough of more or less all of the code to give you an idea of what's going on with it. The code is very simple and uh, well written and clean code and I've uh, read a lot of C code and written a lot of C code and I'm still learning new coding techniques and I think this is an example uh, that is worth studying. Uh, in addition, of course, as an operating system kernel, it illustrates some of the basic concepts that you'd be learning in an operating systems course. So that's another good reason to study this code in detail. For this video series, I'm not going to assume that you have any knowledge of the RISC-V uh, instruction set architecture, uh, but I will assume that you have had some assembly language coding. I intend to walk through the assembly language instructions line by line, so I, I will hold your hand there, so don't worry. Um, have you had an operating system class? Uh, maybe, maybe you're in an operating system class right now that is using the XV6 system. In any case, uh, I've taught a few operating system classes and I'll probably uh, go over some of the concepts as we encounter them. This is going to be a long series, so buckle your seatbelts. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, I'm assuming that you've got uh, some brains and furthermore, I'm assuming that you're interested in this particular system and can focus for the amount of time that it's going to be uh, for this video series. So let's uh, look at some of the features uh, that the kernel has. It's got processes. Um, these processes run in their own virtual address spaces. So there are page tables for a uh, page table for each address space to support the virtual address spaces. The operating system supports files, uh, Unix-like files, and the directory hierarchy. Uh, you can pipe data from one program to another program. Of course, uh, there's a timer interrupt, so there is multitasking. The, the various processes are running in parallel uh, with time slicing. Uh, there are 21 system calls that are implemented in XV6. This is not a lot. The uh, production Unix systems have more like uh, 300 system calls, uh, maybe 500 system calls, but this is enough uh, to give you the core ideas of Unix. Uh, there are a number of user programs that are supplied with this kernel, and these can illustrate uh, the capabilities of this operating system. The operating system can run a simple shell program, in fact, I made a video that talks about the shell program in detail. You can look for that if you want. 
other common Unix programs, cat, echo, grep, uh, kill, which is used to terminate a process, ln, which is used to create a hard link from one file uh, to another, and ls, which is used to list out the contents of a directory. You can create directories, you can remove files, and wc is for counting the words in a file, as well as the characters. So, all in all, I think that this can really be considered a true Unix system, although it's pretty short and simple. Uh, there's a lot that's missing, okay? Definitely all the complexity of a real operating system is, is not there. A real operating system like Linux may have, you know, as much as a hundred times as much code. Uh, you know, we're talking a million lines of the kernel, and, you know, when you add the device drivers in, you can go up to many millions of lines of code. So uh, this is just too much for any human to study, really. And if you want to find out how kernels work, this is really the operating system for you. Uh, but there, there are some things that are missing from your typical uh, Unix or Linux system. There are no user IDs and no login sequence, no verification. There are no protection bits associated with files. You know, the read, write, execute protections, that's not here. Uh, the mount command is just not available, so uh, you just have one file system. In a real system, uh, the virtual address spaces can be paged out to disk so that you can run more processes than will fit in physical main memory. That's not present in XV6. There's no support for networks, no sockets or anything like that. Uh, in fact, there's no way for processes to communicate or synchronize amongst themselves. Uh, there are two device drivers, but uh, a real operating system, a real world operating system is going to have many more device drivers uh, to support all kinds of different bits of hardware that you might find. And lastly, there is only a limited amount of user code. I listed uh, the uh, approximately 10 programs that are uh, distributed with it, but a real usable Linux or Unix system is going to have lots and lots of apps. So let's uh, go over some of the system calls that are present. I'll go over these in more detail later when we encounter them, but I just wanted to kind of list them out here so you could see what we've got. So fork, these, these are familiar from any Unix or Linux system. The parameters are slightly different um, in some cases, but uh, the idea is, is there in concept anyway. Fork is used to create a new process. Uh, wait is used to uh, wait for a child process to terminate. Exit is for terminating a process. Pipe is for creating pipes. And then we've got open, close, read, and write for dealing with files. Uh, We've got kill to terminate a process. We've got exec, which is passed a file name and we'll read in that file. Presumably it's an executable file and we'll load it into memory, creating a new virtual address space and execute it. Uh, we can make um, inodes. We can create links, uh, hard links, and we can uh, remove hard links and unlink files thereby possibly removing them if it's the last link. We can get information about files. Uh, we can change directories, so we do have a notion of the current working directory. Uh, dupe is used for copying file descriptors. Then we can get a program ID, uh, sorry, the process ID for the current process. We can grow the heap, so that's this function here, this system call here. And we can put a process to sleep for a, a while. We can also see how long the kernel has been running. So in the next videos in, in this series, I'll be going through the code in quite a bit more detail. But I just wanted to start with giving you an idea of what this operating system kernel has and uh, what its capabilities are. So you can determine whether you want to 
make the commitment for watching these videos. As I said, this series is not for the faint of heart, it's not for the amateurs, it's for people who really want to look at an operating system kernel in detail and understand uh, a rather large, but not uh, too large, body of code. Okay, let's get started with the next video.